Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovation, and you know, our YouTube channel is generally designed to give people lots of ideas, tips, tricks, advice, construction technologies, on how to do renovations at home. But today we're kicking it a little bit old school. We're gonna go back, and I'm taking care of the drywall taping today, doing corners inside, outside, first, second coats. We're gonna go through the whole process as I tape through this room, and I'm gonna show you how to do it with some basic tools. We're gonna go back to just the old fashioned, I've got my hawk, I've got a 4x10 knife, I got my 4 inch, I got my kill spray, I got a knife and paper tape and a drill. That's it. If you have this, well, plus the bench, <laughs> if you've got this setup, you can tape like a pro and we're going to show you how. So let's just get right into it. So the first step you've got when you're taking care of your drywall job is your preparation. It's, uh, it's a necessary evil because you want to make sure you've gone through the whole room, taking care of all the issues because a lot of the repairs that you're going to want to do before you get started are going to create dust and dirt and crap falling around and you don't want that falling into your drywall compound or what I call it mud. You don't want it falling into your mud in the wall after you've put it on there because that just makes a mess. So what you're looking for is you take your four inch knife and you're running around your screws and as long as it makes that nice scratching sound you're good. I gotta find one here that's wrong. Oh, there it is. You can hear that? So even though we have a dimpler set on our screw gun, that's gonna happen occasionally. If the screw is going in on an angle, okay? This is probably my son, he always puts the screws in on an angle. Just give a little bit of a tighten up. Make sure you don't have any contact anymore. The other thing you wanna look for is certain areas like, I remember when we were screwing this drywall on, the wood backing only comes out to here. And so, you know, this screw is embedded, this screw isn't. But the best way to get a screw out is to get it spinning and then push the screw head to the side so the threads will grab the drywall and it'll, it'll back out a little bit. Then you can just yank it out. Okay. So we take the end of this knife here and we make a dent. Whenever you have an imperfection in a wall, you want to create a dent because a dent can be filled. And here's another one, here's another one. This is all part of the prep, right? All right, let's get up here. Now, you want to check your corner. You don't want to be hitting any drywall when you're running down the wall, right? You want that nice and clean because then your metals can stick nice and tight against the wall. If you have bumps and raised sections, it's going to cause an issue. I got some down there. All right, so this is going to be an outside corner. And if you have little torn paper here on the outside corner, it's not an issue. But if you have torn paper somewhere else, or if your drywall got installed upside down, and I know as homeowners that happens sometimes, you measure and you don't think properly. So you have this huge amount of brown paper face showing, right? You can't apply a drywall compound on that. So we have a trick. Bum, 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 bum. One of my favorite products in the world. It's just an oil-based aerosol primer. All right, and what that does is it creates a bit of a moisture lock to protect that brown paper from the compound while it's drying. There we go. Done. Five minutes, that'll be dry. You can put compound over top of that and you're gonna have no problem at all. Worth its weight in gold. So once you know that all your screws are sunk properly, your corners are good, your torn paper issues are dealt with, any uh, imperfections are dented and ready to be filled, the only other thing you wanna double check is make sure you have enough screws in the drywall sheet. A lot of times when you're putting in drywall, you know, you get moving ahead so fast, you'll miss a screw here or there or a whole row. Make sure it's all done because once you pull out the taping tools, you're not going to have the drill on you anymore and you just don't want to go backwards in time. So make sure you walk through the room, get everything prepped. Now it's time to pull out the pail of mud. Let's talk about mud for a second. All right, so drywall compound is a, it's an interesting product because there's different companies that manufacture these products in different areas in both countries. Anywhere you go, this is called machine mud. Our company is CGC that we have in this area. They make a whole line of sheetrock products and it doesn't really matter where you live. You're going to have different companies selling the same product, but the important issue here is down here. So to answer all the questions we've been getting, if you have a lightweight, all-purpose, right, ready-mixed compound, that's what you're looking to buy. Doesn't matter what the name is or how they market it and brand it, that's the product. So uh, we have three or four, maybe five different drywall compounds available on the market that are lightweight, ready-mixed. And so it doesn't really matter which one you use. The reality is every single one of them has one thing in common. Even though it says ready mixed, it's not ready to be applied to the wall. <laughs> you still have to put it in a pail and add a couple cups of water and mix it up. And we're gonna get into that process a little bit later to show you about it. 
but I have just enough mud left over in my pail right now that I can finish taping this. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to show you how to put on your corners. We're going to show you how to mix the special quick drying compound to fill all your corners. Then we're going to show you how to mix your mud and set up another pail of that and do a second coat on the whole room. Stay with us. We've got a lot to cover and hopefully we'll be able to help teach you something you haven't learned before. Very important when you're working with drywall tools and compound, keep your stuff clean. I mixed this drywall a couple of days ago and what I do is I take my sponge and I actually wipe the edges and, the, and knock it all down and keep it nice and moist and not crusty because the chunks are what's going to get you on a job like this. Once it starts drying out and getting chunky, it's no longer drywall compound. It's just a mess. You should throw it out. Okay, so we're going to set the tape in the drywall now. There's really only a couple things you need to know. First is you want to apply your mud. Now, wow, we've seen guys showing techniques like throwing all of this mud on the wall like this, right? Holy cow, that's just ridiculous. You're going to spend all day long putting it on and taking it off. Get this garbage out of here. All right, put your mud on your knife, hold it sideways. All right, that's how you put drywall mud on the, on the wall, right there. You don't make a mess, it's not going on the floor. There's no more there than what you actually need. Okay, you can go both directions, off the side of the knife. And then you just lightly flatten that out. Just, there we go. So we're just gonna set the paper in here. If you wanna know where the middle of the joint is, you can go like this, you can feel it, right? Press the middle there. Lightly press it in. Not too hard here. Okay. That's for the homeowners. This is a great little system to help keep you in line because you don't want to end up taping off a line like that. You basically are going to set the tape with the four inch knife now by pressing it in. Okay. And you can see here that it's dry. You cover the tape with a little bit of mud and then take it right back off again. All right, that makes it wet and you have to stop. If you keep playing with this, it actually starts to absorb enough moisture, it gets wrinkly and it stretches. It's gonna make a mess on you. Okay, so the secret here is to work quickly. Press the extra mud compound out from underneath. Get it wet. Take the extra off. And the reason you wanna have your wet tape wetted on the wall is because wet tape doesn't bubble. If you don't get it wet before or after, it's going to bubble on you. So this is the secret to a nice tape job. Now I know guys that'll wet their tape in a little pail before they put it on the wall. That drives me crazy because then it's already getting wrinkly the whole time you're working with it. I find this is a great way to do it because it goes on dry. You can get it done quickly before it goes wrinkly and you're not pulling it off the wall and stretching it out and cutting it over and over and over again. So my process for taping is to do all of my flats and that means I've got a factory joint with a factory joint or small sections like this, right? This is not a factory joint, but I'm going to put an outside corner bead, inside corner. It's going to get covered up so well it's not really an issue, but I want to make sure that it's not going to crack. So we're just going to apply some compound. Always work with your hawk like this. It becomes a drip tray as well. That's something you're never going to have when you're working with that little pan. Ah, I hate those things. There's people that talk about the difference between using the pan and using the hawk and what the benefit is one versus the other. And the reality is, hawk holds more mud, helps keep your site clean, and helps keep you clean. I find guys that work with those pans are forever covered in mud and filthy. And job sites have always got drippings everywhere. If you're doing a good job with your taping, you should be able to walk away as clean as you started. So when you're working, keep your tools clean. Keep the mud off the edges. Always working it back into the middle so that it doesn't start to dry out on you. Okay? Now we're taking our paper tape. And this stuff comes creased. This has a crease line in it. Okay, so it's almost, it's ready to fold. So what I do is I take a quick look at my room and I know every sheet of drywall is four feet. So I go four feet, eight feet, 
Same as the other corner. Whoop. I got a ceiling edge there, ceiling edge there, and there. Ah, that'll probably be enough right there. There we go. Now I've got all my inside corners already folded, ready to roll, sitting on the floor. Okay, and that is going to speed up the process dramatically. Every time you go to do some taping, you've got to stop and do a crease. It will drive you crazy. So the using the drywall knife, you are going to find that the best way to use this knife is off the side. It's applying this way. So you can load it up with mud and slowly force it out. Okay, and by loading it, I mean like, that's it. And you want to just run it out. And it takes a little bit of practice, right? There's a bit of an art form involved with this. But the system is simple enough. And you're going to want to fill the bottom part. And then the top part. Sometimes the best way to learn how to do this is just sit and watch this over and over and over again. Now I am not using any pressure here. This is just flattening out the mud, okay? I'm getting any excess out of there. I got too much gap there. I'm going to fill that up with mud. Now we're ready for tape. Now, this is my technique. Throw a dollop on the wall. It'll hold your tape in place. So you can set your hawk down and then you're always going to have your tape available. Okay, now, because it's pre-folded, we just stick it in the corner, slide it nice and tight. All right? There we go. We can get our hawk because we're going to want to have the ability to clean our mess as we go. All right? We're going to set the tape into the mud with a moderate amount of pressure here. All right? There we go. And the same thing going back the other way. If you do the top going to the left and the bottom going to the right, you'll keep your tape from sliding along the wall. And if you get a ridge like that, just pull it towards you. All right, work it into the corner. Sweet. Remember, in this situation, less is more. If you put too much compound in behind your tape, it takes forever to dry. And then you're going to add days and days of work. Okay, now I'm just wetting the tape here now, just like we did down on the, on the flat. Putting a little bit on, taking it off. And this is where I cheat. <laughs> I'm actually going to apply a first coat of mud on the ceiling section. Okay, boom. Catch all those drips with your hawk. There we go. Nice and clean. That's going to happen. All right. Now, now I have mud on the ceiling. I want to clean this up. So I'm going to use the knife like this with pressure. Okay. And I'm going to gently come along and just flatten out that lead edge. Same coming back the other way. Okay. So now I have no ridge on the face. I'm going to take my knife along here and I'm basically getting rid of all the extra mud that's on the bottom side and on the inside of that corner. Okay. Now I'm going to place that in the corner and I'm going to go with gentle pressure just to flatten it out. All right. There we go. And then I'm going to pull back. Always move your tool towards the finish. And then one more good clean. There we go. That's how you set your mud. You've got your tape and you've got your first coat on the ceiling. You have no excess mud on the bottom side of that tape. So tomorrow when it's dry, you can come back and do the bottom and have a nice hard, solid surface to press your knife against. You don't have a ridge over here. There's nothing to scrape, nothing to sand in between coats. That is a perfect application. There we go. Now, when your corners intersect, it doesn't matter. You still want to put a full complement of mud on the corner, off the side of the knife, right over top of the, the flats there from before. Remember, this is a factory edge, so it actually has a dip. So it's nice to fill that before you do your corner. Makes it a little bit straighter. There you go. Just flatten it out. If you see dry sections of the wall where there's no mud, 
put the compound in there and fill it up. Don't leave it where they have huge gaps. Fill those gaps with the compound, okay? The gaps are really big. You can mix up a little bit of that 45 minute mud and you can fill all your gaps in advance. Uh, we actually did a video on that. I should probably link that in the description below just to help people out in case you need that. Now, here we go. So I'm gonna put this tape up in the corner, but I don't want a rough edge like that. So I'm gonna hold my knife here, all right? Tear that off nice and square. Now it's ready to be embedded up there. There we go. Push it all the way down to the bottom. Hold the knife and just tear off the paper. Now, we're gonna start a couple inches from the top. Pressing that paper in, okay? And then I'm gonna press it up. That'll keep it from sliding down. Okay, and I'm, I'm just putting that little bit of pressure in that corner there. Help set that tape. All right, always want to finish nice and clean. Now, oh, lean into the wall there. There we go. You can help work the tape into the corner a little bit. It'll help to avoid tears. All right. If there's a wrinkle, just put your knife through like that. If it's, if it's bubbling like that, if it's, not, if it's not sticking down, you can always just come back with your knife, force a little mud in there, all right? Get good contact. Here we go. Okay. Once it's set, get it wet. That actually rhymes. That's a great way to remember it. <laughs> You know your tape is wet when it hits the wall, it won't bubble. Bubbling tape is the number one problem that you're gonna face in this business because the next day you come back, it's bubbled up, it's hollow, it's in behind there. You have to cut the tape out, you have to reattach it. You lose a whole day of production watching that dry. Just maddening. And that's if you're lucky. Sometimes you won't see the bubble until the second or the third day, depending on the lighting in the room. Then you're really in trouble because now you're ready to stand and prime and you gotta go back to the beginning on that joint. All right. Sounds like my boy. Now, just like on the ceiling, I'm gonna take compound and I'm gonna finish one side. I usually do the left side first. It's just a habit, no real reason for it. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to start here. And then I'm going to work my way back to the finish. Okay, I'm going to set this in the corner, create a nice groove, clean out all the excess on the other side, run it back. There we go. No need to sand between coats. Nothing to clean off. Nice and clean. Let's do another one. <laughs> the torn paper. And that's dry now. Beautiful. This is one of those situations where I have a, something that didn't get dented properly there. There's no way you can pull a nice Unless you're filling the hole, right? Beautiful. Just open 
loosen it up. Put your knife, corner right in the middle. Find that edge right there. Here we go. Clean that edge. To have a truly professional drywall job means time and patience when you're setting the tape. This is the point where you make or break your entire job. Too much mud, you've got to be filling it, stretching. Not enough mud, you're going to have things bubbling. It's a nice combination of filling it and not having too much there and creating nice smooth lines. I only need to put one more coat of mud on this inside corner and it is finished. Money in the bank. All right, now a quick recap. We've done our flats, we've done our inside corners, and we've filled one side of the inside corners, which is important because there's mud in behind the joint and there's a lot of fill and that usually takes a little extra time to dry. So I would suggest after you're done for the day, put on a fan, but in the meantime, now we gotta take care of our screws. So again, we're gonna use that off the side of the knife approach I'm going to demonstrate this nice and casually here for you. So you're going to keep this down here, pressed against the wall, and you're slowly going to release the mud going up. So you're filling a hole. You're going to push it into the hole this way, and then you're going to hold your knife tight to the wall and pull it down that way. All right, here you go. Push it in. One motion, really. All right, and when you get good at this, you can make really quick work of a room. And then you want to do the bottom as well. Now don't go all the way down to the bottom of the floor because the last row of screws should be where your baseboards are going to go and you don't really need to worry about filling those. I had a rogue screw there, eh? There we are. Okay, ah. when, now that we've got the screws filled, it's time to put on all of our outside corners, and then we're gonna mix the other 45 minute mud. We'll show you that whole process, we'll fill those corners, and then we'll mix the regular mud and show you how to do that as well. <laughs> and then we're gonna do a top coat on all of those outside corners because it dries so fast. You can get two coats in about an hour. So now that all the joints are taped and the screws are all filled, we're gonna move on to the outside corners. And all you want to do here is just get a measurement, one side to the other. And this is a measuring technique that I use. I extend the tape and then I run it over to the corner. And it's 74 and an eighth. And that's when I go like this. Because undoubtedly, if you're anything like me, right about the time that you take a measurement, somebody calls you to ask you a question, the phone will ring, the dog will bark, the bell will ring at the door. Just do this once, write it down, and then if something happens, you still have your measurement later. So I found the best way to measure and cut these is just to run your tape inside the bead, and then bring your snips over to the line, bring your snips over the line, give that bead a cut, finish that, hold this so it doesn't bend over on you, and start a little bit below the cut and angle up towards it. Just that couple of degrees makes all the difference in the world, the perfect world they would send these at 85 degrees instead of 90. I don't know why, but I love to just give them a bit of a squeeze to close them up just a hair so that when I'm putting them, installing them, it helps to establish a little more angle for filling with the mud. I'll show you what I mean. Set it here. Now you see you have, you have room to press it into place. All right, so that helps you to, to establish where you roll it around. This is the most outward point on this surface and on this surface. So if I set it right here, I can put my knife, and you see the shadow in behind it? So the idea here is that you wanna have a gap right from the corner to the tip of the knife. And that's something you can fill. Without moving that, check the other side. See if there's a gap there. So you might wanna roll it up to create the, see that? Roll it up to create a gap. But now that, find that happy place right there in the middle where you can fill both sides to this corner from the wall. That's where you want to nail it in place. Now a little bit of experience goes a long way here because I can tell where the right spot is just by looking at it. But demonstrating that with a knife gives you an understanding of what you're looking for. You can see that there's two rows of holes here. The one in the middle is actually for the drywall compound to go in and actually bond between the wall and the metal. 
The other row is where you want to put your nails. We're using the blue ring nail here. It's a very thin flat head and that is designed so that when you install it, it's not in the way of your knife so that it is not causing intersection with the taping knife when you're putting your compound on. If you use screws, undoubtedly they're going to be sticking out too far and you're going to go click, click, click when you're filling your mud. You're going to have a problem on your hands. You're going to have to drive the screws too deep. You're going to be bending and twisting the metal, causing all kinds of issues. Learn how to use the hammer and the nails and you're going to be a lot happier with your corners. Pay very close attention when you put your next bead on that you are running that up and you're exactly the same depth. Okay? You don't want to be too high or too low. That's a nasty looking corner. Get it right there on the money. Okay? And then nail back here. So that if you have to make a minor adjustment, you still have a little bit of flexibility before you set the second nail in. That's the only secret of putting in corner beads. Once I get the rest of these up, it's time for us to mix our 45 minute compound, do a fill coat, and then it's time for second coat. So now that all of our metals are on, we're gonna do two coats on the metals and our second coat with regular compound on the walls. So here's the secret. We have our sheetrock 45. Which I have warm water in the pail. And this house, we're out in the country, so it's also well water. So it has lots of minerals in it. This stuff is gonna dry super fast. Super, super fast. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna mix it. I'm gonna use a four inch knife in my hawk and I'm gonna apply just a fill coat. Just a couple of inches worth of mud. Now, this entire ceiling area here, we're gonna add crown molding from here to here, which is why it's not taped. So I don't need to have a whole lot of mud. Underneath here, um, I don't wanna put too much on here, make a mess near my corner, so I'm gonna use a four inch knife as well. If I use this knife here, I'm just gonna be making a mess of everything, it's too big. But on the outside corner over here, bum bum bum, I'm gonna use this knife to fill a nice six or eight inch kind of wide swath, all right? <laughs> so once I mix this, I've got about 10 or 15 minutes tops. So I'm gonna just run like the wind and try to get all this on. And then we will show you how to do all the second coat on the inside corners and flats. Uh, and then we're gonna come back and put another coat over top of this within the hour. Here we go. Definitely a little bit runny here. Wow. So outside corners, generally speaking, we're just filling the gap from here to here. But you see this corner here? These are two different pieces. And that metal edge there, you want to have some tape on there. Because that's the only place in this whole system that's likely to crack. And we use the hawk to hold that still. All right. So, get that tape installed there, press nice and tight. And now we can get some mud on our hawk. And we can just travel that down around the corner. Whoop, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> All right. One of these things about 45 minute mud, when you mix it, you want to mix it a little bit loose. Not too loose that uh, it's raining all over you, but a little loose, especially in the country, especially with warm water. You want it to set up fast, but if you don't mix it a little loose, you won't have enough working time to get advantage of it. Here we go. So it's going to be a little bit sloppy. We're not looking for smooth. All this bubbling is irrelevant because we are just filling the, filling the gaps. We'll put a smooth coat on in a minute as soon as this sets up and hardens. We're just trying to reduce the amount of work 
as far as days that were involved for filling these gaps by filling it all right now. Okay? We just want to put it on. And because it's loose, pulling up helps. Okay? Clean the edges. So using this knife, you can, you can use it two ways. You can pull it this way, or you can reach down, roll your hand under it a little bit, and pull it up this way. It'll help you so you don't have to bend over quite so far to get near the ground. I don't want to feel like I pulled a little too hard. So it started off as pretty loose stuff five minutes ago. Look at this, because it was warm water. It's like putting Play-Doh on the ceiling now. I said, don't worry about the look of this. It's the function that's important. The fact that that is filled up. That's all the we're worried about. Now we're garbage. Just, just done. So just to recap, because I know when we do these types of videos, people get a little confused. Um, we're using our all-purpose mud for everything, and we use the 45-minute mud as a supplement to help speed our process up. So you can fill all your gaps and cracks. You can use it as the first coat on the corner beads, just to fill the gap. Um, you could even use it to fill your screw holes if you wanted to, and that'll save you a little bit of time with, um, you don't need a third coat on your screw holes if you do it that way. But as a rule, if you're new at this and you're just learning how, mixing everything and doing everything with regular all-purpose compound is a benefit. And here's why you can put your lid on it and you can use it again next day. When you mix your 45, their clock is ticking. It will start off soft like you just saw, and then it'll start to stiffen up, and then wham, it just goes rock hard, and there's no saving that for the next day. So, it, it's very handy to have that in your repertoire and understanding that you have options if you're in a hurry. If you're doing repairs, that's a great thing as well. I'm just in the habit of using it all the time now as part of my process, because it takes a full day to tape most projects and put the paper tape on. And on your second day, you can do your corner beads, do your first coat, mix another pail of regular compound, and then you can do your second coat on everything in the second day. And this is just a little way that I've got designed to get a lot of that mud out without getting filthy. Okay? You can squeeze it out and save every drop if you want. Stuff is uh, almost $20 a bag, which makes that last handful worth about 50 cents. And uh, usually I'm just not in the mood to save 50 cents and get covered in mud, so. <laughs> Here we go. Got a full pail of mud there. This is eight ounces of water. I'm only gonna add about six. When I want my mud ultra smooth for my third coat, I'll go the full eight ounces on a box. But for the second coat, six is plenty. All right, so just squeeze the pail together. Start nice and low. It's gonna vibrate a lot. If you bring the blade up too high, you'll get water splashing everywhere. You get that back in your pail of water. So that nothing goes hard and crunchy. So here's our mud. It's nice and hard. Uh, 20 minutes ago, I was just finishing the last application on the ceiling where it was like Play-Doh. Now, you can take your knife and just run all these extra ridges off, okay? Create a nice flat surface so we can finish this up. Here we go. Now, this is our all-purpose compound that is designed for different drywall machines, and I love using it all the time. Remember our goal, because we're adding crown molding, is just to have a perfect three inches here on the bottom. All right. I don't have to go all the way to the top. Just create a nice little finished coat here. 
Now the best thing about the second coat is again, it doesn't have to be perfect after second coat. All right, you have the luxury of coming back one more time to make things perfect, all right? Ba -da -ba -boom. Now, this is how you can get your corners filled up in one afternoon. We just put these metals on. Okay, we mixed up the 45, warm water, and within just a few minutes, it's rock hard and ready for another coat. Absolutely amazing, right? Now, you'll see my program here. This was the first coat, remember? And the paper I didn't do, but I, I did put a coat on the ceiling. I'm finishing this outside corner. And I'm doing the bottom side of the inside corner. They don't intersect. It's nice to just have a plan so that you're running against something nice and dry. Now remember the way that we did our corners is we cleaned the edge, we went like this, right? And then we came back and did this the first time. Here's this thing. Now that's rock hard. Now I can actually put my knife up against it and use it as an edge. It makes a perfect corner. A lot of fun here. You can use a lot of mud or a little bit of mud. If you use too much mud, you'll have pitting. If you see that, just run your blade with a little bit of pressure, okay? Flatten all that out. That's what you're looking for. It's better to come back with an extra coat than to try to put too much mud on at one time. All right? That's perfect. <laughs> all right, now, the next time I come in here, I'm not going to use a four inch knife on the ceiling. I'm going to use a five or a six. So it goes from here to here. And I will do one more nice pull. And that'll make this look absolutely perfect. Here you go. You can see the first coat. I did this corner yesterday. This is nice and dry, right? Just double check on your blade around looking for any little bumps that might be left lying around. Go right into the corner and pull your mud away, okay? Now, remember we always want to pull towards the finish mud. It's never going to be perfect when you do that, but it's so easy to sand. Okay, that's nice. Same for this, the corner bead, right? Use the side of the knife, get it in there. You want this to be a four inch wide blade, Just like your knife is, okay? You're going to want to take your knife and clean the outside edge. Put it in here. Groove that edge. And then you're going to come back and then just pull straight down. You'll flatten it into the corner and have a perfect inside 90. All right, at that point, if there's anything left on the outside, you want to fuss around with it right ahead. But the important thing is to have a perfect inside corner. That's how that's done. Again, hit all your screw holes. All right, just to make sure, every time you pass over a wall, you hit the screw holes, it takes three coats of regular mud, or one coat of 45 and one coat of finish. Now, we'll get down off the ladder and we'll show you the rest of the joint. Okay, so we're just gonna finish the inside corner here real quick. And you can be even a little bit sloppy here if you want, right? Flatten it out. The important thing is to have more mud than you need, okay? You don't have to be perfect. There we go. I don't know, I just made a huge mess here for you. I'll show you how to fix that. So we're gonna come in right in there, groove that out. Okay, so now there's something to fill when I come back with the knife. Pressure, I'll clean the outside. Now I'm just gonna run up the middle. You can almost do that blindfold, eh? You will close all the gap up, just hit it a second time. Whoops. There we go. That's about as perfect as you're going to get. Except right there. Okay, now, you'll see that you have your, your paper embedded in the mud. You can see that we had a little bit of a thin finish coat over top of it just to keep it nice and wet. There's absolutely no bubbles. Every time. Never see a bubble on my job site. Because I always 
put mud on my tape. Now, again, get a nice trowel full, okay? It's not going to fall off. Hold it on a, about a 30 angle in both directions. You're snow plowing. You're, you're working against gravity, so you're pushing it up and over at the same time, okay? Reverse your hand. Now that's lots of mud. There's a lot more than you need. And here's why. You want to take your trowel and put pressure on the bottom, just like we do with a four inch blade. And you want to run that nice and tight. Because what we're trying to do is fill from here to here, where the tapered edge is. Do it on the top as well. You don't want to make the wall any thicker. Now. Medium pressure straight across the middle. You're filling the gap. Okay? If you have any lines, just go right out to the corner and flatten them in again. Nice. That's all there is to second coat. Second coat is actually really quick and simple. If you can do the tape joint on your job, you can do the finish coats. Second and third coat are basically the same. You're basically just filling in all the voids. This wall here is probably going to need one more thin coat. Like I said, we'll add a little bit more water in the mud to loosen it up even thinner so that when we have to sand, there's not much work to it. Uh, just make sure that when you're doing your second coat, you find all your joints, you hit all your screws, all your corners, and any imperfections around your electrical boxes where you cut in, you make sure you repair those while you're at it. Don't get lazy and leave it till later, all right? All right, I'm just going to finish getting this done in a hurry here. Now, we have a new addition to our company. We have a new website now, and I'm going to encourage everybody to pop over there. The link is in the description. What we have there is we've been working feverishly behind the scenes on affiliate links so that you guys can get access to products and tools. And we're starting to work with different companies to get better deals for you. We're really excited about that. Now. If you're interested to see about the project that we're working on here, this is actually my kitchen reno. And if you click the link right here, you can join us from the beginning, right from the demolition all the way through the rebuild. We'll see you in the next video.